In this video, we'll take a look at a piece of vintage amateur radio test equipment, the Heathkit HM15 Reflected Power Meter and SWR Bridge. An SWR bridge, or meter, measures standing wave ratio, a measure of how well a transmitter is matched to a transmission line and antenna. An ideal transmission line would have a match of 1 to 1, indicating that all the power is reaching the destination and not reflected. It's a commonly used piece of test equipment by radio amateurs. The meter connects in the transmission line between the transmitter and antenna. Basic SWR meters, like this Heathkit HM11, just show SWR and percent reflected power on a single meter. Some, like this Heathkit HM102, can also report the output power level in watts. Another common configuration is this one, which shows SWR on one meter and output power in watts on a second as well as providing a field strength meter function. An SWR meter may also be incorporated into an antenna tuner, like this MFJ unit, which also provides antenna switching and dummy load functions. It uses two meters, one showing forward power and one reflected, with SWR indicated by the point where the two meter needles cross. Heathkit offered a number of SWR meter kits over the years, starting with the AM2 in 1957. It was followed by the HM11 in 1962, which was essentially identical to the AM2, but followed the style and color of the then-current Heathkit amateur radio products. In 1966, it was replaced by the HM15, the subject of this video. The HM15 was followed by the HM102 in 1970. A similar HM2102 model supported VHF frequencies. Finally, the HM-102 was replaced in 1978 by the HM-2140 and later the HM-2140A, which was offered until Heathkit exited the kit business in 1991. The HM-15 was sold from 1966 to 1970 in the form of a kit and typically retailed at a cost of US $14.95. It was essentially the same as the earlier AM-2 and HM-11, just varying in color and styling, and intended to match Heathkit amateur radio equipment of the time, specifically the SB series. It shared the same case as some other products, such as the HD15 phone patch. A single meter indicates SWR and percentage reflected power. A switch selects forward versus reflected power, and a control adjusts the meter sensitivity. The rear panel has SO239 UHF connectors for connection to the transmitter and antenna, marked input and output. It supports the amateur radio bands from 160 through 6 meters and can handle up to 2000 watts peak effective power. At construction time it needs to be wired for either 52 or 75 ohm transmission line impedance. The circuit shown here is quite simple. It doesn't have any active circuitry, it's powered by the radio energy from the transmitter and doesn't need any power source of its own. Inside you can see the circuitry which is all point-to-point -point wiring. It uses a coaxial cavity with forward and reverse pickup elements to sample forward and reflected power. It uses a 100 microamp meter, two 1N191 germanium diodes, and some resistors and capacitors. The values of the two resistors determine whether it's built for 50 or 75 ohm transmission line impedance. Earlier Heathkit units were similar. Some later versions used a printed circuit board to simplify assembly, and some used toroidal inductors which makes the measurements less frequency dependent. Operation is quite simple. To use it, you connect the unit between your transmitter and transmission line, or transmitter and antenna tuner. I have it connected here to a Yaesu FT450D transceiver set to 20 watts of output power. The output is going to a 50 ohm resistive dummy load. In operation, we set the function switch to forward, key the transmitter, and adjust the sensitivity control for a full scale reading as indicated by the set mark. Now set function to reverse, key the transmitter, and read the SWR off the meter. You can see here I'm getting an SWR of very close of 1 to 1 indicating a good match with no reflected power. If instead I use a 40 watt light bulb as a dummy load, 
I'll get a moderate mismatch as it's not quite 50 ohms. The SWR is about 3 to 1, indicating a reflected power of about 25%. The insertion loss of the meter is quite low, so it's acceptable to leave it connected at all times so you can monitor your SWR while operating. I bought this unit on eBay in March of 2025 from a local Ottawa seller. It came with an original manual. It was in good cosmetic condition and all parts appeared to be original. I initially gave it an inspection and light cleaning. There was faint marking on the back that appears to be a ham radio call sign VE3GST. That would indicate that it was likely part of an estate sale. Several people owned that call sign in the past, so I wasn't able to definitively determine who it belonged to, but it was likely a ham in my area who passed away in 2010. Looking inside, the quality of the kit assembly was about average. I noticed that the two resistors inside didn't match the value specified in the manual, either for 50 or 75 ohm versions. I can't think of any good reason that the values would be different other than maybe they burned out and the builder didn't have correct ones. The actual values of the resistors had also drifted significantly. I replaced the resistors with the value specified for 50 ohm transmission line, which is the most common and what I use. After replacing the resistors, I found that it gave SWR readings that were reasonably close to what I was seeing on my other SWR meters. The sensitivity of the meter, the minimum power needed to measure SWR, varies with frequency and it's more sensitive at higher frequencies. The manual gives the sensitivity of the meter as ranging from 70 watts on the 75 meter band, meaning the high end of the 80 meter band, to 2 or 3 watts on 6 meters. I measured the approximate power needed on each band with my transmitter and a dummy load and got these results. 160 meters at 1.8 megahertz, it was more than 100 watts, my transmitter won't go higher than 100 watts. 80 meters at 3.5 megahertz was 77 watts. 80 meters at 4 megahertz was 59 watts. 60 meters was 35 watts. 40 meters, 20 watts. 30 meters, 11 watts. 20 meters, 7 watts. And on the 17, 15, 12, 10, and 6 meter bands, it was less than 5 watts, and my transmitter won't go lower than 5 watts. These measurements are in line with what the manual lists for sensitivity. Speaking of the manual, it's relatively short at about 14 pages, but covers the kit assembly in detail with many illustrations. It covers operation, specifications, theory of operation, and even some charts showing the attenuation of various types of coaxial cable by frequency, as well as dB loss for various SWR levels. The HM15 was, and still is, a basic SWR meter that does the job it was designed to do. Offered as a kit, it would have been significantly lower in cost than commercially assembled units. It was a relatively simple kit. A magazine review of the unit from the time reported a total build time of 1 hour and 20 minutes, and it didn't require any test equipment to calibrate. It lacks the ability to measure output power, something that the later but more expensive HM102 unit could do. It needed a reasonable level of output power, suitable for use with most transmitters of the time, but not for QRP transmitters, which are under 10 watts, except on the higher bands. I imagine many of the units are still in use today. I also own examples of the Heathkit HM11 and HM102 SWR meters, and I've made YouTube videos about them. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, check out my other YouTube videos on vintage Heathkit amateur radio and test equipment.